During some recent sampling adventures, we've been noticing that some of our high turbidity samples have been getting abnormally low NTU readings on our turbidity meters. Using a calibrated turbidity meter, we conducted a series of experiments using a sample with noticeably high turbidity. I mean, look at that, it's nearly indistinguishable from chocolate milk. Our goal here was to see if the problem was an equipment limitation or if we had a suspension that looked more turbid than it actually was. Would you believe that our meters read this sample at 64.2? We wouldn't have believed it either until it happened. In response to this abnormal reading, we decided to let the sample settle for a bit just to see what would happen. After a 15 minute wait, we got the sample to read 924 NTU, a much more believable number based on the appearance of the sample. Another 15 minutes didn't offer much difference. So what happened with that 64.2 reading? Was there a technical malfunction, or had we found some revolutionary new substance? Just to be sure, we decided to let the sample sit for a bit longer. Our reading started to drop quite a bit. After one hour, it read 704. Another hour, and it read 420. Just for fun, we decided to give it a 24-hour wait just to see what it would do. Wouldn't you know, it read an abysmally low 9.56 NTU. A good shake, and what do you know, we're back at around 65 NTU. So what did we learn from our little experiment here? Well, we learned that abnormally low NTU readings in the field may mean you've encountered an equipment limitation. The sample could be so turbid that it confuses the meter into reporting an NTU value much lower than it actually is. But it looks like you can get around this by allowing the sample to settle for a few minutes. But be careful, don't let it settle to the point where it's no longer a representative sample.